Hey guys, hope you guys had a good SHOT Show for 2024, and we're going to be diving into our top 15 list, give or take. There's some honorable mentions here, and the first one being Daniel Defense with their H9. Now, their H9, it, it supposedly what they said, now with their H9, supposedly they're saying that there's only one part that they share with the Hudson, which is really what this is, it's just a Hudson H9. Um, but kind of looking it over, I don't know how much of that is true, but we will see. Uh, honestly, not that excited about this handgun. It's just a, basically a Hudson. Uh, excited that it's back, though. Uh, moving on, something pretty cool. Hollow Sun last year had announced their red dots that had night vision and thermal capabilities. Uh, they barely made it to the show in time for that. And uh, anyways, we actually got to shoot them out at the agency party, and they told us that, hey, these are these are shipping next week uh, i think the thermals are in, in four weeks or so or something like that but the night visual ones are shipping next week and will be at distributors so you'll be seeing on dealer shelves very very soon moving on from that we had tactile load this is pretty cool it's a stock system um it, it can go back on like an 870 but he's got socks for remington winchester uh, brownie i mean you name it he's got stocks for it but basically it houses the extra shells that you would need up inside of the stock they're super easy to plop out uh, if you guys want to see we do have a short uh, covering the entire thing that i'll link up here in the video so next we went over to the bursa booth and i really like these suppressors that they had to offer at first glance you go Meh, it's another suppressor but after talking to the engineer what we come to find out is not just another suppressor right now you are looking at the baffle stack right for a 30 cal suppressor and that tube the suppressor tube is completely hollow so it goes inside the smaller tube here and that acts as a resonator so it resonates that smaller tube instead of the entire suppressor tube which helps you know mitigate effects of poi shift and uh, some other things that are going on in there next on the list is the diamondback firearms 357 magnum stub nose revolver which is their sdr is the model this guy's coming in at about like $780 MSRP. Anyways, it was sweet shooting. It was just fun to shoot it out at the range and I really like the wood grips that they had. Uh, you know, it, nothing too crazy special, so that's why it's not high up on the list, but overall it's a good revolver. Okay, so over at Spartan Precision Equipment, we've had their Javelin before and we absolutely love it. Great bipod system, but now they're getting into the tactical world. And with that, he started making these tripod setups and you have so many options the head itself works on three different sets of legs uh, you can have a small medium or large the uh, system for the bipod up on the front still works with their same other qd setup that they had for their hunting line it's just really cool stuff i recommend checking out the video right here so next on the list is huxworks and they came out with some new suppressors for 2024 like their Venom lineup, which is a 5.56762 cans, but something that caught my eye when we were out at the range is they had a 12 gauge suppressor. So they had a shotgun suppressor and it was on the end of the Genesis 12. So of course we had to go check that out. Come to find out it's not available for the civilian market and they might do it, but really this is a purpose-built suppressor for the Genesis 12 and it's an LE only suppressor. While well, I think it's really, really cool, it pushes it way down the list just because of that. But something that they are coming out with is their new sauce, which is a suppressor cleaner. And from what we hear, this stuff works really, really well. They're just waiting for the packaging to get figured out, and then it will be shipping out this year. So next on the list is Arrow, and they are making lever actions now, which is cool since they're a builder company. You can get these parts, kind of build it, customize it to what you want to a degree. I think that's really cool. My only complaint is the price point at $1,800 is pretty hefty in my opinion. And because of that, that's why they got pushed down the list a little bit. Next up is gonna be Silencer Co. I have been waiting for them to announce a 762 Velos since they announced the 556 Velos. I, the first question I asked out at the range was, when can we get a 762? Well, we don't know, we might not do it. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. You guys have to do it. Well, glad to say that they did. It is out along with two other cans, but really to me, it's the Velos that is making it up on the list here. All right, so next up is Zostava. They are putting out their new RMK, 
which is going to be awesome. I'm excited about it. It's a really cool looking gun. I just didn't get a date as to when it's going to come out, so I can't tell you that, and I didn't really get a price point yet. Uh, but the cool thing is it comes with a bipod. It's heavier barrel, so on, so on. It just looks really cool. I'm excited about it. Alrighty, so the number four spot is going to go out to BNT for their APC 9K SD2. The reason for this is it's just it's a really cool gun, and the backstory is basically they just got the contract with the APC-9 for the military, and this was an additional submission that they said, hey, this is what we can do. It was basically to demonstrate available technology for the subcontract weapon. And anyways, military in their fashion said, no, nah, we don't want that. And we're like, okay, well, we already invested time and money into this, so let's just take it to the civilian market. Chambered in nine millimeter, obviously, it's got a barrel that's kind of like the MP5s where you can put 115 grain 9mm through there and is going to take that supersonic and drop it to subsonic and it's also got an additional suppressor you can add to the end to increase the suppression of the firearm. Okay taking up the number three slot is going to be the Chris Vector Gen 3. So why would this go in there? I think the gun looks fantastic. It's got a new shroud with M lock on it. The 16 inch barrel is actually threaded finally. They've updated the ergonomics. It, it just looks, you can do ambidextrous for the mag release. It's got an upgraded stock that just looks better as well. It's a pick rail mounted in the back. It just overall, they did a lot of the things that the community's finally been asking for. And uh, I think it just, it's fantastic. And I can't wait to pick one up. It's also available in four calibers, 45 ACP, nine millimeter, 10 millimeter, and 40 S and W. Moving on to the number two slot, we're looking at the Beretta BRX-1. Now, this isn't completely new, but it is coming to the US market, which I think is huge. The fact that you can easily swap out and change your barrels, change your calories, you can change it from uh, right hand to left hand extraction, you can put the bolt handle on left or right, you can mix and match that too with the extraction. Um, and you'll see here with the B-roll, you can kit it out to be tactical, it can take PMAX, I mean, you just start looking at this and it it's a really, really cool bolt to action platform that has so many different uh, utilities that you could use it for. It's just a versatile platform. All right, coming up in the number one slot, and actually this is like one C because it's a three-way tie. And I think out of all the things in, that could be competing for the number one slot, I think this is lowest on the totem pole. And I might get a little bit of heat for this, but it's the UXR. Um, I think it's cool. I think it's awesome that you can do 308 as well as uh, 556 and the calibers that kind of fall under that, the AR-15, AR-10 area. But it's not really like, it's not original, right? This is stuff that has been going on with different platforms. You can look at like the ACR or the Wyndham project, which is now Hydra. This stuff has been going on for years. It never has really taken off and really been truly um, adopted by the community. I hope it is because I think it's a really cool platform. Um, I just don't think it's like anything that's just crazy. Um, but nonetheless, these the guys over at PWS do a fantastic job. I'm sure the gun is going to be fantastic, and I really hope this thing takes off, especially coming in at, well, some are saying 2500 It really, on their placard, said 2650 550 for the conversion kits. It's, uh, it's pretty cool, and the fact that it'll be shipping out in two months' time, about a month time, is pretty awesome. So I look forward to seeing this gun, getting to use it, and I really hope the community adopts this because I want this platform to stick around. All right, next runner up for first place is gonna be PWS with this XM7 concept. This thing is awesome. It's the MP7 we all needed, but it's, you know, it's the MP7 at home. Anyways, this thing's cool. Uh, at a thousand dollars, I mean, it's just like I, I want to buy like 20 of them. It's just so freaking awesome what they did here. And uh, I can't wait for it to not be a concept and actually be a reality and be on the shelves for everybody. So looking forward to that and moving on to our number one slot. And it's something I didn't even get footage for, but it's going to be the Tommy built T7. And this is an MP7, but not just at home. No, this is an MP7 that is a correct clone. And I had no idea it was there. We left the show. Had no idea there's people that went by the booth at BNT and they had no idea it was there, but Tommy Bilt had put it there because he had the BNT suppressor on it. Anyways, 
this thing is shipping right now. He's already made 500 units. I think he's gonna end up making more. He's, apparently he sold like 3,000 while he's at the show. Uh, it comes in at $3,500 as you can see here on the website. And that's why this footage is from the website because we had no idea. I mean, we walked by it. We thought it was just a normal MP7. That's how realistic this thing looks. We had no clue unless you just saw that T7 down on the grip there. So anyways, that's our top 15 for SHOT Show. Hope you guys had a good SHOT Show and we will see you guys next year regarding that. Stay tuned to the channel for reviews coming up.